Okay, so you're thinking about buying a home and relocating to Seattle, Washington, but you have no idea where the perfect place to live is? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be discussing today. I'm gonna take you on a virtual tour. We're gonna jump into my computer, pull up Google Maps. I'm gonna show you all the spots that you need to know right here in Seattle. We're gonna check out all the restaurants, cool places to hang out. We'll check out each neighborhood, you name it, we're gonna cover it today. By the time you're done watching this, you should know of a couple spots that you may like to live in Seattle, but more importantly, there may be some that you'll hate to live in. So if you're ready to learn a lot more about Seattle and the cool spots that you need to know about, stick around because we're getting after it right now. Okay, we're gonna jump in and get started right away. You'll see we have Google Maps pulled up on the screen here, and right in the middle, you'll see the, the city of Seattle, the red dotted lines dot the border, so everything within those red dotted lines is uh, Seattle proper. And you know, one, one of the first things you'll notice when you look at Seattle on the map is that it is just surrounded by water. So if that's something that you are looking for, you love water views, you love being around water, then you're gonna fit right in here in Seattle because it is everywhere. So if you look over here to the west of Seattle, this is the Puget Sound. So this body of water right here, this is the Puget Sound. Salt water feeds in from the Pacific Ocean and uh, great fishing, you know, if you're into salmon fishing or boating, whale watching, stuff like that. All of that can be done right there in the Puget Sound. If you look a little bit to the east of Seattle here, so this big body of water, this is Lake Washington. So it is a freshwater lake, the largest lake here in the Puget Sound region. And you know, it, it actually feeds into the Puget Sound. It kind of makes its way through here into Lake Union out the ship canal and into the Puget Sound. But um, it, it's, it's connected, but you know, this is a fresh body of water. So, you know, lots of lake activities, boating, wakeboarding, skiing, you know, really popular in the summer times. Uh, lots of, summertime, lots of uh, really nice houses, waterfront houses on Lake Washington. So um, just a, a really, really big, large body of fresh water. And then if you look over here a little bit further to the east, this is Lake Sammamish. And not quite as big as Lake Washington, but still a large freshwater lake. Again, really popular with the summertime activities. So like I said, water everywhere here in Seattle. And if that's something that you're looking for, you're gonna find it no problem. Now, the water does pose a little bit of a problem. And what I mean by that is the traffic that we have to deal with here in Seattle. You may have heard Seattle's got some, you know, pretty bad traffic, you know, probably not quite as bad as what you're gonna see in like LA and, you know, towns like that. But traffic throughout Seattle is pretty horrendous. And and a big reason for that is just because you don't have a whole lot of ways to, to get around uh, besides like north and south, okay? So let me just zoom in a little bit here for you. And I'll show you the, the main highway, freeway here, I-5. This runs, you know, it starts down in California, down at the Mexico border, runs all the way up through Seattle in Washington here and ends at the Canadian border. So spans pretty much the whole western side of the United States. So you, you stay on that road, you're gonna go down to Mexico if you're heading south. Now, there's also uh, another major, major highway here. This is I-90 that runs east to west, and that runs all the way over to Boston, Massachusetts. So I think it covers, you know, traverses like 13 different states, several thousand miles, but um, you know, long, long highway and you know, it all kind of comes to a, it either starts or ends in Seattle. I think it starts in Seattle and ends in Boston, if I'm if I'm uh, not mistaken. But um, you know, you you just you don't have a whole lot of alternate routes as far as travel goes. You know, these big bodies of water really limit where you can drive, where you can travel. So, you know, heading northbound throughout Seattle, I-5 is usually going to be the preferred. Uh, method of travel where you're going to be driving on but if you have to get across over into the east side here and when i say east side i mean like bellevue redmond 
Kirkland. That's typically what people refer to when they say east side here in Seattle. Uh, there's just limited routes that you can go. So you have the I-90 bridge right here, which is the popular route. You have the 520 bridge, which is an, actually a toll bridge. So you have to pay to cross that one, which puts, you know, you got, you got paid across this one up here, which pretty much shifts everybody down here to I-90 and puts a lot of pressure on the I-90 bridge. You know, you can also go up and around the lake, you know, the north end of Lake Washington. You can go through the south end of Lake Washington through Renton as well. But, you know, you can just kind of see there's limited travel options getting around the Seattle area. So it just kind of you know, clusters everything together, makes travel a little bit difficult. And, you know, every everybody deals with traffic, it seems, unless you're coming from a really, really small town. But it's pretty bad here in Seattle and something that you may need to get used to. Hey, real quick, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is David Sappenfield. I'm a local real estate agent right here in Seattle. And, you know, on this channel, we make new videos every week about what it's like to live, work, eat, play right here in Seattle. And if that's something that you'd like to learn more about, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market right here in Seattle. You know, just about every day we get reach outs from people just like you looking for help to make their move right here to Seattle and nothing makes us happier. So if you're thinking about making that move, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Our contact information's popping up on the screen right here. We'd love nothing more than to help you make that smooth move right here to Seattle. Okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, let's start exploring Seattle, going through the neighborhoods, all the cool spots that you need to know about. And, you know, like I said, I'm just going to play tour guide today. I'm going to just kind of go through, show you the neighborhoods that you need to know about. You know, we're not going to be able to cover every single neighborhood in Seattle. There's just way too many of them. But, you know, I'm going to talk about the most popular ones, the ones that you should know about, the ones that you should be considering. And, you know, we're going to go through look at all the the points of interest all the activities that are you know you, you can do in these areas and uh, yeah like just kind of i'm playing tour guide so let's let's jump in and get going here so um we'll, we'll start at the south end of seattle work our way north and um you know see how see where that takes us so as we zoom in here this south southeastern section of seattle this is the rainier valley and that is you know probably the most affordable real estate in seattle you know a little bit of a higher crime rate in in the rainier valley so you know that's why you're going to see a little bit uh lower with uh, the you know median home price median home price in rainier valley you're looking for a single family residence of about seven hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars you know we are starting to see quite a bit of you know gentrification in that area you know there's a, quite a few new condos popping up in the rainier valley area and you know they're, they're doing a pretty good job of, of of cleaning stuff up but you know the the median price for a uh, condo in Rainier Valley, you're looking around 700,000. And, you know, like I said, there's just quite a few new construction condos in that section of town. So, um, up and coming, I guess you could say. And, uh, but that, that's going to be your, your most affordable section, uh, when, when looking in Seattle, as far as real estate values are concerned, you know, another reasonably priced area here is the Beacon Hill neighborhood. And that's right next to kind of the Rainier Valley here and, um, a little more conveniently located here next to I five, as far as, uh, you know, from a commuting standpoint goes, but you know, Beacon Hill, you know, a little bit more affordable as well. So your, your, your median, uh, single family home in in Beacon Hill is going to be right around six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and for a condo you're looking just shy of five hundred. So you're looking four hundred and ninety five thousand uh, dollars median sale price for condos in Beacon Hill. So definitely more affordable. And you know if you are a golfer, if you enjoy playing golf, uh, Jefferson Park Golf Course is right here in Beacon Hill, the South Seattle neighborhood and uh, fun little public course. You know, if you know Fred Couples and who that is, this is where he grew up playing and um, just kind of a local, 
legend golf hero here in Seattle, but um, that's kind of the first course that pops up here on the south end of Seattle. There's a few that I'll point out, um, but this is the kind of the, the furthest south one next to West Seattle over here. So uh, if we zoom out a little bit, let me just pull Seattle back up here. And so we covered Rainier Valley, we covered Beacon Hill. Over here, this west section, the southwest section of Seattle, this is West Seattle, okay? Now, West Seattle is uh, more of a, a, a quieter community, I guess you could say. Uh, it has a ton of single family homes. You have a lot of townhomes, lots of condos. So a really good mixture of different housing options over here in this part of town. Uh, for a single family residence, your median sale price is gonna be right around $888,000. Uh, for condos, you're looking right around 500,000. So, um, a little more affordable than what you're going to see further north in Seattle, but you know it's kind of a little, little bit more inconvenient to get into Seattle from from this part of town. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So right here we have the West Seattle Bridge, and the West Seattle Bridge is pretty much the only way to get into Seattle conveniently. You, know, you have a couple different alternate routes that you can get up into Seattle from in uh, from the West Seattle Bridge, but you know, it, it just isn't very convenient to get over to Seattle and then back over to West Seattle. And there was a while there actually, uh, about a two year stretch where the West Seattle Bridge was closed. Uh, they had some structural damage that they needed to repair and it shut it down for a couple years. So really the West Seattle neighborhood took a pretty big hit and you know that's why you'll see real estate values a little more affordable over there you know they're still they're still recovering because people did not want to live over in West Seattle as of a couple of years ago because you could not get across the West Seattle bridge it was a great time to buy over there because real estate prices were you know really getting some downward pressure because of the the traffic nightmare that people were dealing with but so if you bought back then that you're, you're doing awesome now you're catching it on its way back up but you know that that is you know why you'll see real estate prices a little bit lower in West Seattle than the other parts of Seattle that we'll cover but um, West Seattle is a, a fantastic neighborhood probably one of the most um, popular things about West Seattle is going to be uh, Alki Beach and that's just kind of up here on this northwestern point of Seattle and if I zoom in here uh, just a long stretch of sandy beach now one thing about Seattle area beaches that you may not know about, you know, if you, especially if you're coming from like Southern California or a place that has really nice beaches, maybe even Texas, uh, the, the beaches up here just are not that awesome. They're rocky. They kind of have a weird smell to them. There's seaweed everywhere and the water's not very warm. Even in the dead of summer when it's 90 degrees out, it just still is ice cold. So, um, if you love the beach, if you love, you know, the sand, you know, this is probably about the nicest beach that you're going to be able to find in the Seattle area. Another one up north that we'll get into, I'll show you where that is later, but um, right here on Alki is, is probably, you know, where you're going to, you're going to, you know, find those kind of activities that you're looking for. Let me kind of zoom in, give you a street view here, but along this stretch here, you have a, a walkway here that runs, I think, two miles, two and a half miles, something like that. Maybe not quite that long, but a really nice stretch for rollerblading, bike riding, walking, people watching, uh, lots of restaurants right along this strip right here. So really cool part of town. Um, but um, but yeah, just kind of a little, little tucked away over here. Uh, lots of really fantastic views here from this northeastern side here. Uh, of, of downtown Seattle here. You have uh, Salty's Restaurant. This is a really, really good restaurant right here on the, on the, um, the peninsula there that looks back towards Seattle. But the, the views are incredible and it's just a really good restaurant. So probably, you know, one of the more, more popular restaurants there in Seattle. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's West Seattle, a little bit more affordable and, you know, it, it bumps right into to White Center here. 
White Center isn't technically in, you know, Seattle proper, but, um, you know, White Center, a little bit rougher part of town, I guess you could say, a little higher crime rate. So the further south you get, the, the further you go from, um, you know, the higher real estate values, I guess you could say. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's West Seattle. And um, if, we, if we jump back across the bridge here, let's get into this main part of Seattle. And then we run into the Soto district, okay? And the Soto district is, um, Soto is called South of Dome, or what it, what it stands for is South of the Dome. So several years ago, I think it was 1999, 98, something like that, the King Dome used to be there. They demolished that and they built T-Mobile Park, which uh, you'll see right here, T-Mobile Park, you have Lumen Field. So T-Mobile Park is where the Mariners play, our pro MLB team, uh, you have Lumen Field, field right north of it and that is where the Seahawks play and you know it's not just sports if you are a fan of going to concerts and you know during the summertime they have a lot of really really good outdoor com uh, concerts at Lumen Field um, but yeah there, we went down a little too far here I'm just kind of show you show you these stadium sections here so yeah here's Here's one of the entrances to T-Mobile Park. Back over this way is Lumen Field. So if you're a sports fan, you enjoy going to games, concerts, stuff like that, this is, this is where you're gonna be doing a lot of that at. Um, also another venue, just up north in the Queen Anne neighborhood, we will get to, but um, as far as you know, your bigger sports for NFL, MLB, that's what you're going to find right here in this Soto neighborhood. Lots of great bars, restaurants, all within walking distance right here. Um, just a little bit further north. This is your, um, uh, this, this right here is going to be a very, very high concentration of restaurants, bars, nightclubs and you know it's called pioneer square it's just right down here in this section and uh let me just kind of jump in here i'll show you exactly what we're talking about so here's pioneer square downtown just lots of good, good restaurants we're, we're just north of the stadiums that soto district right there you know one thing about uh, pioneer square is you know there's in, in Seattle in general, you know, there's just a, a little bit of a homeless crisis going on. And you can see from these pictures, when were these captured? Uh, this was July of 2021. You can see the, the tent set up and, you know, they've, they've, they go through and they clear them out and then they pop back up in different places. But, you know, the, the homeless, the homeless crisis in Seattle is, is, you know, very in your face and it's, it's right there. And there's, there's no, no getting around it. You're, you're going to see it if you're in the downtown area and, you know, it's just something that we're dealing with and hopefully uh, an issue that they're going to get under control soon. But as of right now, it's a, it's a pretty big problem. So uh, let me see here. So yeah, this is um, right where I-90 you know, begins. So we're, we're just heading a little bit further north here. And, you know, you find the, the Chinatown or the International District right here. This is also kind of right next to Pioneer Square, just north of the, the dome, you know, or the uh, Soto District there. And really uh, some of the best Chinese food restaurants that I know about uh, are right here in the International District. And just a great part of town to, to hang out. Um, and, you know, it's, it's it's uh, really just convenient, just right there, right down by the stadiums, right by you know the the Pioneer Square. So um, if we move a little bit further north here, the Central District, or the you know you might hear people call it the CD or the Central District. Um, this is uh, another kind of up and coming neighborhood. You see a lot of gentrification going on here in the Central District. Uh, you'll see a lot, a pretty good mixture of single family homes as well as condos. Uh, the, the median home price for a single family home in the central district is going to be right around 1.2 million. And then if you're looking for 
condos, the median home price is going to be around 780. Okay, so 780,000. So um, definitely a kind of a jump up from what we were seeing a little bit further south. But you know, like I said, this this part of town is really really starting to see a lot of gentrification and you know a, a lot of um, up and coming areas here within the central district. So. Uh, and, and just really conveniently located, you know, you're smack dab in the middle, basically, of, of downtown Seattle. So um, let's jump in here a little bit here. Let me zoom in. So this is just like your, your main downtown Seattle area. Uh, right next to the waterfront here, you'll see all these lines going out into the Puget Sound. This There's a ferry terminal right here and you can get on a, a ferry, take it over to, to Bremerton. You can take it over to uh, Vashon Island. And you know, a lot of people that live in those island counties will commute by ferry daily and this is where it gets dropped off right here but um, downtown Seattle obviously there's not a lot of uh, single-family homes you're gonna see condo living basically in downtown Seattle and you know the median home price for a condo in downtown Seattle you're gonna be looking right around six hundred and forty five thousand dollars so um, you know and that's just to kind of live in that really convenient right there in the core and um, that's just kind of what you're what you're gonna um, see as far as typical condo prices right there uh, but right here right next to downtown area here here's the waterfront and the the waterfront has really undergone um, a major renovation and revitalization as of a couple of years ago and I'll kind of jump into a street view here to show you and um, this is actually uh, before so this big ugly structure right here this roadway is called the Alaskan Way viaduct that's actually no longer here they totally ripped this out so you see all these businesses right here it was being blocked by this big ugly viaduct that was blocking people's views to this beautiful downtown uh, excuse me waterfront of downtown Seattle well they ripped out this viaduct they uh, they went with an underground tunnel okay and then just a little bit further north it shows or excuse me a little bit further south it shows the viaduct not being there so this a good little before and after no longer is there that big ugly viaduct it's been torn down and there's a tunnel underneath for traffic to go through so just a, a like i said major revitalization of this whole downtown uh waterfront area and it's just a, a million times better i mean that viaduct was so ugly and uh those those businesses i just I, you know it's just they're they're absolutely loving the fact that that's no longer there and they just have that wide open view of the puget sound so um, there's a Seattle Aquarium right here. This is great. I can remember always going on field trips to the Seattle Aquarium. Great place to take the kids, the family. Lots of really cool, um, you know, sea otters, all the, you know, all the sea life, everything that you're going to see here in, in the Seattle area. So that's all right here, right on that waterfront section. Okay, if you're still watching up to this point, you must enjoy what you're seeing. And you know, nothing makes me happier. I love making these videos for you every week about what it's like to live, work, eat, play right here in Seattle. And you know, I have a favor to ask you. If you're getting any kind of value from this video, can you take half a second and hit that like button right down below? It does a lot of things for the channel, but most importantly, it helps me know that I'm on the right track to bringing you the content that you wanna see. So just take half a second, hit that like button, and let's get back to the video. If we go just a little bit further north of that, then we run into the Belltown neighborhood. And the Belltown neighborhood is uh, mostly just, just condos. You know, you're kind of like the downtown core of downtown Seattle. You're going to see um, condo living in Belltown, but Belltown's kind of known for, you know, it's nightlife, a lot of nightclubs, a lot of really good restaurants, bars right there, all within walking distance. And, you know, First Avenue is kind of the main strip here that runs through Belltown. Let me pull that up here and just kind of give you a a look at what Belltown looks like. Um, yeah, great spot. Um, lots of lots of lots of really good 
nighttime hangouts, you know. Way back in the day, that's where we used to hang out, but I do not do that anymore. <laughs> so um, not not much time is spent at in, in Belltown for me these days. But uh, if that's the kind of thing you're looking for right there. Boom, you're you, you have it. So um, Belltown is just kind of tucked right next to South Lake Union right here. And South Lake Union is sort of like it's now considered like a tech hub and you know, that's where you're going to see Amazon. That's where you're going to see Google offices, you know, a whole bunch of biomedical facilities and stuff going on right here in South Lake Union. But, you know, pretty much just Amazon, Google. Um, here's a here's a cool building right here. The spheres. Uh, this is Amazon's office building here. One of their several office buildings but yeah look how, how cool that is it's called the spheres really just uh you know like a piece of art it's just cool cool spot to go hang out and you know this is south lake union just a really really hip younger vibe um and just uh you know if you're in the tech industry chances are you know you you might be working there if you're not working over on the east side of seattle uh south lake union just has that that really high concentration of of tech jobs available to everybody here and then it's just like right here south lake union and this is lake union right here this this body of water and if you remember at the beginning i was saying lake washington feeds into Lake Union and then it feeds into the Puget Sound here through the, the ship canal. And um, you know, that fresh water flows out into the, the salt water of, of the Puget Sound. Um, so yeah, and that's, you know, um, the tech center right here, South Lake Union. And um, it, it, this, this part of town gets pretty backed up with traffic. So you'll see Mercer Street, you know, they've done a lot of, uh, a, a lot of construction on Mercer. I clicked the wrong button here. Um, they, they've done quite a bit to try to ease up on the traffic, but uh, it, it is just a nightmare getting up and down Mercer. Not as bad as it was a decade ago, but you know, that's where you're gonna run into quite a bit of traffic. You know, just all those people going to work, getting into downtown Seattle, you know, that kind of feeds in right over here into Queen Anne. So just north of Belltown, west of South Lake Union, you're gonna have Queen Anne. And that is right here. And there's two two parts of Queen Anne, I guess you could say. There's a, a lower Queen Anne and an upper Queen Anne. And if we're looking at the lower section of Queen Anne, then that's where you're gonna see the Space Needle. You're gonna see the Mopop, that's the Museum of Pop Culture. And you know, the all, all the, the sights and scenery that you see on TV, every time they show Seattle on anything, you're gonna see you know this part of town. Let me just kind of zoom in here and show you what we're looking at. Mopop, this is a really cool building. You can kind of see just how, how unique, how different it looks, kind of blocked by these trees. You can't really see, but um, yeah, just a really cool, you know, history of, of music. And, you know, Seattle just has a, a, a very rich history of, you know, grunge music. You know, the 90s was, you know, very, um, uh, you, just lots of just awesome talent that came out of the Seattle area during those years. And, um, you know, that's just kind of, uh, you know, the Mopop is, where you're gonna go and see a lot of that and it's not just local area uh, music either it's it's everything and uh, just a really cool spot so definitely would recommend checking that out and you know like i said that's just here in lower queen anne and in, in lower queen anne mostly you're gonna have condos you're not gonna see any single family homes. I mean, maybe there might be a couple, but you know, as far as lower Queen Anne's concerned, you're just looking at condos. And for Queen Anne, we are looking at a median home price for condos of around 554,000, 
one thing that you need to be aware of living in this Queen Anne neighborhood, desirable, but right here is Climate Pledge Arena. So this is our newly renovated uh, arena for sports. You know, this is where the um, Seattle Kraken, the NHL team plays. This is where the Seattle Storm, the WNBA team plays. And, you know, for at least half the year, I would say, you know, there's concerts at this this location as well as the sports um, going on just about every night, it seems. You know, so you, you really are fighting traffic quite a bit um, up in this, you know, lower Queen Anne area. So here, yeah, so this is when it was under construction. They were redoing Climate Pledge and this is kind of, yeah, when was this back in 2021? So. It's all complete now. All these black fences are taken down and it's wide open. Really nice, nice part of town. Um, but you will deal with quite a bit of traffic if you're living in that lower Queen Anne section. So if you're trying to drive around to places, it's not gonna be fun. But you know, a lot of people that live in that area maybe you know, you know work in South Lake Union and don't need a car. So, um, but if you're, if you're looking to be driving around, Queen Anne's probably, um, low, living in Lower Queen Anne is probably not going to be a, a fun spot for you. Um, but then we let, we have Upper Queen Anne here, kind of north end of Queen Anne. This is up on a hill, so you know that's why I said Lower Queen Anne and Upper Queen Anne because there's a really big hill. Um, this is like the highest elevation actually in Seattle. Uh, you, you'll see some of the best views of downtown Seattle right here at Cary Park. Let me zoom in here. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see probably the best Seattle views you can find. So right here, it's just a small little park right here in this residential neighborhood. But you'll see really cool houses up here in Queen Anne, kind of old Victorian style, um, early 1900s, but just beautiful, beautiful homes up here. And look at the views, incredible. So great park. Probably, like I said, the, the best views that you probably will find anywhere of Seattle is gonna be right here. And for single family homes in Queen Anne, we're looking at a median home uh, me median home value of right around 1.4 million up here in Queen Anne. So we're getting a little bit more expensive, and you know that's uh, you know we're starting to get into some of the more expensive parts of Seattle. And um, yeah, Queen Anne is a fabulous neighborhood, and just lots of stuff going on, lots of restaurants. Uh, really walkable community, especially in that lower Queen Anne section, you're going to have everything that you need right there. If we look next to Queen Anne here. So this, this, this water right here, this is the ship canal and you know, that separates Queen Anne from Fremont and Ballard from Magnolia. Uh, but Magnolia is the next place that we want to talk about here and Magnolia is is beautiful um, Magnolia when I think of old money you know you hear people talk about old money you know old money you definitely think of Mag you know, I think of old money when I think of Magnolia really really nice um, super super nice part of town to live in um, older demographic of people that live there uh, naturally, but uh, as far as, you know, your, your single family uh, median home price, you're gonna be right around 1.2 in, in Magnolia. For condos, we're looking right around 452,000 for the median sale price for condos in Magnolia. Um, one thing you have to kind of be mindful of, um, there's train tracks right here. You'll see they run. So some of these, uh, you know, lots of lots of condos and townhomes on this eastern side of Magnolia, and be careful because you you might hear some train noise depending on where you uh, where you live. You know, the further you go west into into Magnolia, you know, you're not going to hear anything. It's quiet. It's beautiful and awesome. But you know, you might you might hear a little train noise on that that east side of Magnolia. Uh, this big green patch right here, this is Discovery Park, super nice park, um, takes up a big chunk of, of Magnolia, but you know, I think it's like a 535 acre park with a uh, lighthouse and just a, a really, really kind of peaceful, quiet, away from 
the the noise of I-5 in downtown Seattle, but you're still really close. You know, you can get into downtown Seattle in 10 to 15 minutes, no problem. So um, just kind of a, you know, just a quiet laid back part of town right there in Magnolia. So if we jump over to the other side of South Lake Union, this takes us into the Capitol Hill neighborhood. And the Capitol Hill neighborhood, you're gonna find single family homes, you're gonna find condos, you're gonna find townhomes, a really good mixture of all of those up in Capitol Hill. Super convenient if you work down in that South Lake Union area, if you're a tech worker, uh, Capitol Hill is, is fantastic. Uh, very walkable community, a lot of restaurants, a lot of bars, uh, lots of just, you know, hangout activities. It's very, um, LGBTQ friendly, um, you know, probably the most friendly area in, in all of Seattle is in this Capitol Hill neighborhood. Um, but yeah, just a, just a, a fantastic part of town. Lots of little coffee roasters and just the restaurants are, are fantastic. And they're all kind of, like I said, within walking distance, typically, uh, Broadway is the, the main strip right here that you'll see in Capitol Hill. That's kind of how you get north and south through there. Let me, let me just pull that up, get you a street view. Here we go. So this is Broadway and just, you know, just an example of, you know, very walkable community very cool I, I i love capitol hill um it's it's just it's great there's just everything that you would need is up there and you know like i said a pretty good mixture of you know really nice huge big homes um as far as the median home price for capitol hill for a single family home you're looking around 1.3 million uh, if you're looking for condos, you're going to be looking right around 470,000, the median sale price for condos right here in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. But, um, but yeah, if you're, if you're into the nightlife, if you're into just kind of hanging out and being in that, that trendy, um, great vibe of an area, Capitol Hill is, is your place. Um, if we slide a, a little bit further east from Capitol Hill, this is where you'll find another um, section of, like I was saying, with old money with Magnolia. Madison Park is definitely going to be the kind of the same vibe, but a lot more expensive than Magnolia. Uh, but Madison Park right here, just on the, the western shores here of Lake Washington. Beautiful, beautiful kind of exclusive community. Um, just to give you an idea at Madison Park, you know, the, the median home price for um, home or more like a mansion in Madison Park is gonna be right around 5.23 million for a single family home. If you're looking for a condo, you're gonna be just shy of a million, right around 925,000 for a condo in Madison Park. But uh, just a really, really kind of nice, exclusive, beautiful part of town here. Um, there's a Broadmoor Golf Club. This is a private, private course country club in this area and um, but yeah this is really really just um, a, a beautiful if you can afford it and you know you, you, it's in the budget Madison Park is definitely something to consider okay if we jump across the water here from Madison Park and the Broadmoor Golf Club here you will see the University of Washington okay U Village, um, University District, that is all right here. And this, this highway right here is 520. This is the 520 floating bridge across Lake Washington. That's the toll bridge that I was mentioning. Kind of feeds right into Seattle here. Husky Stadium, University of Washington, uh, the U District, everything right here. Lots of shopping, um, lots of condo living. You see a few single family homes, of course, in that area. Um, but, you know, just generally kind of a, a college part of town. And, you know, U Dub is a, a really big school, beautiful. I'm sure you've probably seen it on the, the news with, you know, sporting events and everything that go on there. But um, let me see if I can pull up Husky Stadium, probably get a good look of it from the pictures here. But it's a beautiful stadium right on the water. Can't really see too well. But yeah, one of the one of the more beautiful 
venues in college sports and you know very loud um great place to go watch a football game so if you're into that sort of thing i would definitely recommend that and just right there in the u district um here i'll pull that up and just kind of show you where we're looking this is all of the u district right here and um yeah but like i said just kind of a college a lot of college kids running around in this part of town so um that's that's what you're going to see quite a bit of uh, if we side slide a little bit to the uh, to the west of the U district, then we will run into Fremont, and you know there's Fremont and there's Wallingford. Okay, they're kind of tucked right up next to each other. Uh, Wallingford here, let's just pull up the border. Uh, Wallingford is. Uh, just kind of a quiet little community. You'll see a lot of, of single family homes in Wallingford. Um, very similar to kind of what you'll see in, you know, Fremont, the, the neighboring community there, but uh, Gasworks Park, this is uh, a really cool little park here right on the north end of Lake Union. And uh, Gasworks Park, is act, it's actually like an old gas company that used to reside there and they left all the all the equipment, all the stuff that you see here in this picture, and uh, just a really cool, uh, again, probably one of those one of those parts of Seattle that you've seen on either movies or TV or you know anytime they show Seattle, they usually show shots of Gasworks Park, and that's where that is right here in the south end of the the Wallingford neighborhood. Okay, right next to Wallingford, you'll find Fremont. But actually, you know what? Before we get into Fremont, I want to jump back over here to South Lake Union. I forgot to talk to you about, um, you know, real estate prices in South Lake Union. So you're going to see condos down there and uh, no single family homes, just all condos in South Lake Union, kind of high rise buildings and whatnot. But your, your median home value for a condo in South Lake Union is going to be right around 685,000. So if you're a tech worker, you want to live right down close to um, where you're working, you know, that's that's about what you're going to be paying for the median condo in South Lake Union. So forgot to mention that. So I wanted to just skip back there real quick here before we move into Fremont. But um, Fremont, uh, another great neighborhood, um, just right across, uh, just north of Queen Anne and uh, a whole lot of really, really great little restaurants, a lot of bars. Uh, every every October, Fremont has a really cool Oktoberfest. Um, if you if you like beer, um, there's a really really just a, a fun Oktoberfest there in Fremont. Um, there's also uh, Google offices right here in Fremont. So um, kind of sticking with that that tech theme here, uh, we have you know just kind of Google all over the place right here in Fremont. So um, you know. If you work for Google, possibly you're working, you know, right there in in this location. Uh, there's also Adobe is located right here in Fremont, and uh, just a lot of a lot of breweries, coffee companies, coffee shops, great restaurants. Smaller town um, Fremont is. It's it's not too big. It's just you know right next to to Ballard here. A lot of the times they group. Fremont and Ballard together, you might hear it referred to as Freelard. Um, so, uh, but just a, a really cool kind of, um, just, I, I wouldn't say quiet because it's definitely got some nightlife to it and just a, a great community though. Um, really, really a nice, nice part of town to live in. You're going to, you're going to find a lot of, of townhomes in Fremont, a lot of condos. There's, there's definitely a few single family homes as well in Fremont, but, um, you know, it, it's going to have typical, uh, you know, similar prices to what you're going to see in Ballard. So we'll just kind of cover those two together. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of really cool townhomes in Fremont rooftop, uh, you know, kind of rooftop, um, patios that you're, you're going to see there uh, in a lot of those newer townhomes. So just a, a really, really cool, cool town. Um, right next to that, like I said, we, we have Ballard. Ballard's a little bigger, um, uh, very similar to Fremont, kind of uh, a lot of, a lot of 
nightlife, a lot of bars, a lot of really, really great restaurants. Uh, you're gonna see a really, really good mixture of single family homes, townhomes again with those rooftop decks, um, condos as well. Uh, median home price for a single family residence in Ballard is gonna be right around a million fifty. Uh, for condos, you're gonna be looking around 547,000. And if you're interested in the townhomes, you're gonna see a lot of those townhomes in Ballard as well. That's gonna put you right around 810,000 for the median home price for townhomes in Ballard. Um, Ballard, uh, lots, of, lots of cool things to do in Ballard. You have the, the Ballard Locks right here. That's This is basically where fresh water meets the salt water of the Puget Sound. And uh, this is how boats get in between Lake Union through the Ship Canal out to the Puget Sound. So really cool. Definitely worth checking out. Lots of, you know, I'd say it's definitely one of those tourist attractions going to the Ballard Locks. They have, uh, you know, a fish ladder. You can see big giant salmon swimming through there. Really, really cool. But, um, you know, just a very, um, uh, you know, just, it's, it's pretty much, um, kind of, a, a I won't say a sea theme in Ballard, but it kind of is, you know, you have, you have all these, all these docks and, you know, if you're familiar with that show, the deadliest catch, a lot of those, uh, fishing vessels, dock right there in Ballard. So, you know, really just a, a cool, cool part of town. Um, another really cool beach is this Golden Gardens Park right here in the kind of northwestern corner of Ballard. And they, this is another, you know, probably second to Alki. You know, this, this has a lot of nice beaches as well. You kind of see from the pictures here. Um, but, you know, it, it's, sandy beaches you don't see a lot of rocks you don't see a lot of seaweed um pretty sure there's an off-leash dog park here as well um and yeah just a, a great part to um go go um, hang out on the beach in really really popular area especially during the summertime at uh, golden gardens park and then uh, another one up here in, um, this is just north of Ballard here in Carkeek Park. This is another great, uh, great, great park. Um, kind of pull up some pictures to show you that. So you have, you have two really cool parks right next to each other. Here's a good view of it. Uh, yeah, they have, you know, a, a play area for kids. Um, yeah, it's have a, the train running right by the, by the water there. And yeah, just, uh, uh, another really nice park as well as that Golden Gardens Park right there. Um, but if we slide across here to the east side, we're almost wrapping it up here. We have uh, Ravenna. Ravenna is right next to Green Lake. And so you're going to see kind of similar prices in Ravenna and Green Lake. But Green Lake for your median home value for a single family home, you're going to be looking right around 1.18 million. And for a condo, you're going to be looking around $770,000. Uh, Green Lake is a very very uh, popular part of town. You'll see it here. Um, Woodland Park Zoo is right next to it. Not technically in Green Lake, more of that kind of Wallingford neighborhood. But um, Green Lake is just a smaller lake and it has a paved trail that goes all the way around it. It's a 2.8 mile trail very flat elevation, not a whole lot of different, you know, uh, changes in elevation. So really great place to uh, train for running, um, take long walks, biking, rollerblades, um, or again, just people watching, you know, that in this north eastern section of Green Lake. This is kind of where the, the main park is. And, you know, you'll see play fields, you'll see basketball courts. Yeah, just across the street here, this is the actual park itself. But really, really nice part of town. Highly desirable is this, you know, Green Lake, Ravenna area. And uh, a lot of single family homes, you know, you're going to see some, some condos and townhomes sprinkled in there as well. But um, yeah, just a, a lot of really cool, uh, really cool looking homes that you're going to find in those neighborhoods. Um, okay, so we're going to move on over here. Let's drop down to Laurelhurst real quick. This is just kind of right next to University of Washington. Laurelhurst, this is kind of a quiet little community. Um, definitely, definitely uh, a little bit 
higher end, uh, a lot of older homes, quiet community. You're just going to see a bunch of single family homes, not a lot of condos. Uh, but you know, median home price in Laurelhurst is going to be right around 1.4 million. But um, definitely quieter part of town in relation to kind of the um, the college district here next to it in the U district. So. Um, Right here, uh, you have Seattle Children's Hospital is in that Laurelhurst neighborhood. So maybe if you're a healthcare worker, you know, working at Children's, this is uh, right here. And uh, this is a really, really, like I said, great, quiet little community. Um, if we go up a little bit further north here, we've got Warren G. Magnuson Park. This is a nice park right here on the western shores of Lake Washington. And um, yeah, we're, we're kind of running into shoreline here, but all up here, you know, the, the further north that you go in Seattle, you know, it's gonna get a little bit, little bit more affordable for you, um, you know, in this Bitter Lake area, Northgate, um, you know, the, and the nice thing uh, about, you know, the further north you go, you know, there's a light rail system here now, which makes it really, really easy to get around and you can jump on it. It pretty much follows I-5 up and down north and south here, branches over to the east side as well, all the way down to Federal Way eventually up to Linwood, but really, really easy and convenient way to get around is just jumping on that light rail uh, train and getting right downtown in just a matter of minutes kind of drops you through University of Washington as well. If you're, you know, professor there, student, uh, you can definitely, you know, take advantage of the light rail in that location as well. So, um, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty extensive tour here of um, all of the Seattle area called out a lot of the main main spots that you need to know about and um, yeah it, it's, a, it's a great part of the world to live in okay so those are some really really cool spots in the city of Seattle that you should definitely know about and you know that's only the city of Seattle there are so many more places outside of Seattle in the Puget Sound region that just make living in this area so cool and you know I think you're gonna love it it's a great spot to live if you can deal with the weather and the rain but you know all, all in all Seattle is just just awesome and you know if you're thinking about making the move right here to Seattle Make sure you give us a call, reach out, send us a text message, email, phone call. Our contact information's popping up on the screen right now. We'd love to help you make that smooth move right here to Seattle. And if you wanna learn even more about what it's like to live, work, eat, play here in Seattle, click on this playlist that's popping up right now on the screen. This is all the videos that you need to see about living in Seattle. We have pros and cons, we have vlog tours, we have everything, best videos about Seattle popping up right now. So check those out. And until next time, we'll see you later. See ya.